Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET VBPI. So this video is all about basic things related to HTTP in context of VBPI. I know that all of you are aware of the concepts related to HTTP, but we are going to see the terms in context of VBPI. So let us start. So all of we know that HTTP is an communication protocol and it handles the communication between the client and server. So those who are aware of web application definitely knows this fact. Now, what ASP.NET Web API does, it handles the HTTP protocol in an efficient manner using .NET. So and with, the, with the help of that, we can create a RESTful web services. HTTP protocol has a set of standard elements. So let us see what are the standard elements. The first element is resources and URIs. Second is HTTP methods. And third one is HTTP status code. Again, I'm telling you that all these things or terminologies we are studying here in the context of ASP.NET Web API or you can say in general Web API. So let us see what is resources and URIs. So basically, resource in HTTP is not just a file in the form of HTML web pages. Generally, well, those who are working in web application has mindset that only a web page is a resource. But it is not. It is one of the resource you can say. Okay. So in general, resource means what? It is any piece of information that can be unambiguously identified by you by uniform resource identifier. Means it can be a text file, it can be a HTML file, it can be image, video, or any dynamic business data. Okay, so everything will be termed as resource, and each resource will have a URI, uniform resource identifier, and it, it, it should be unambiguous, it should be unique. Remember this thing. Now, let us see what is or what are the HTTP methods? See, once we know the resource, the next thing is that we are going to perform some actions on that resource. So to handle those actions on the resources, HTTP uses HTTP methods, which is also known as verbs. Now here I listed few of them, though there are some few more verbs. These are very commonly used verbs. Definitely, I'm going to cover that other verbs also, but initially I do not want to confuse you. So that's why I listed only the common verbs that we use frequently. So get, generally we say get request, then second one is post, then put and delete. So these are very common HTTP methods or you can say a common HTTP verbs that we use frequently. So there are some other uncommon verbs also that we are going to study in upcoming videos. Now, the last thing is HTTP status code. Okay. So basically, HTTP status code is a response from the server to the client. And the purpose of it is to determine whether request is fulfilled or not. Okay, so whenever we request, whenever a client requests anything from the server, we got response. And along with that response, a status code is also sent from the server. So let us see few of them. 200, which nothing but a okay. 201 means created. 400 is bad request. 404 is not found. 401 is unauthorized. 500 means internal server error. So those who work on web application, you're obviously familiar with this. Okay. So again, uh, the purpose of telling these things, right? Status code and HTTP verbs, everything, because we are going to use these things while implementing or while developing a web API. That's why I'm covering this part also. Now, the next term, uh, the next standard element is HTTP headers. Now, what HTTP header allows? It allows the client and server pass an extra information with an HTTP request or response. 
okay means both client and server can pass an extra information and that extra information can be passed through http headers so whenever client send a request along with a request a client can pass an extra information and whenever server sends a response along with that response server can also send an extra information now what can be that extra information we'll see so basically let me cover one more point all the headers are case sensitive header header fields are generally separated by colon and key value pairs in clear text string format so let me show you one example so this is one get request and whatever you see is below is nothing but a information in the header given in key value format which is separated by colon so host is a key whereas code.tutesplus.com is a value user agent is a key whereas mozilla 5.0 is a value accept is a key text slash html is a value okay so these these are the various information that we can pass from client to server or server to client in the header so again whenever we are going to implement our own web api we also need to send some information okay and that information can be sent through header okay so at that time uh, this part may be more clear to you so just remember that there is one concept of http headers which allows you to pass an extra information from client to server and server to client so that's all about http basics if you have any doubt or any inputs or any comments you can definitely write it to the comment section thank you for watching